In this tutorial, I will show you the shine effect for logos or any other graphic. Let's start by going to effects and dragging our fusion composition in our timeline. Then head over to the fusion page. Here we will open the media pool and drag our logo into our node graph. Then we can close the media pool again and connect the logo to our media out. I will use the DaVinci logo, you can use any logo or graphic you want. Then I will take a background node and a rectangle mask. I will connect the rectangle mask to the background and then I will get a merge node and drag it over the connection between the logo and the media out. And now we can connect the background node to the merge node. Now you can see we have this black rectangle. So let's click on the background node and change the color to white. In the next step, I will drag in another background node and match it with the logo at the front here. So we have a bigger canvas. So let's do this real quick. Now it's black. So click on the match node and press control T to swap the inputs. And now the logo is on top of the black background. Now we have a little bit more space and we can click on a rectangle and increase the width. Then let's decrease the height. And now let's make sure that the rectangle is only over our logo and not over our background. For this, we will press shift space and search for a bitmap. And we take the output of our logo and drag it into our bitmap. And then the output of the bitmap and drag it into the merge node, which connects the white rectangle to our logo. Now you can see our white rectangle only appears over the logo. Next, I will create an angle for this white rectangle. We could click on the rectangle and change this angle, but then if we move it up, it will move straight up and not in an angle. So let's reset this angle and the center Y position. And let's use a transform node then I will change the angle on the transform node. Let's use 50 degrees. And now if we change the center Y value on the rectangle, it will move diagonally and not upwards. And that's just how we want it to behave. Now let's move out this shine effect. And to do this, I will press shift space again and search for Gaussian blur. Let's move it over this connection and increase the strength. And then I will get another node, which is a soft glow node. And let's reduce the gain quite a bit. But as you can see, the effect is way too strong now. So I will click on the rectangle node and here's this level slider and we can drag that down. Let's put it to 0.25. Now I will take this rectangle, press Ctrl C and then Ctrl Shift V. Now we have this instance node of the rectangle uh, which values are linked to the original rectangle. And you will see why we need this in a second. By the way, if you want to learn more about video editing or are searching for assets for DaVinci Resolve, check out the link in the video description. And we will do the same for the transform. Control C, Control Shift V. And the same for the background. Control C, Control Shift V. We can delete this match node and drag it here. Now let's connect them in the same way the originals are connected. And then let's move this up a bit so we have more space and get another match node. Right now we are just seeing the original parts because the other parts aren't connected to our node graph yet. And if we place them into our node graph, you can see 
there's this hard rectangle. That's because we don't have a Gaussian blur and a soft glow behind them. So let's add them. Let's get a Gaussian blur. And a soft glow. This time we don't use instances, so we can change the values freely. And what I want to do is create a small part of the rectangle, which will be this instance one, which is brighter. And then I will use the original one to create a bigger part on this shine with less intensity. So if we disconnect this again, we can see we already have the part with less intensity. And we just need to adjust our instance one. So what we will do is click on the height value of the rectangle with our right mouse button and then press the instance. Now this value isn't linked to our original value anymore. So we can drag it down without changing the original value. And then let's go back to the Gaussian blur and increase it. And now we can click on the rectangle again and de-instance the level slider. And now we can play around with the opacity of the smaller but more intense light part. So I will leave it like this. And now here comes a part where we use this instances. If we change the center value on this rectangle, it will change the center value on the smaller part too. So we only need to animate one and not both of them. And if you want to change the color of the background, for example, it will change on the smaller part also. And that's the reason why we used instance nodes. So to finish this effect, I will go to frame 15 and take the rectangle mask and move it all the way up to the top left. Then I will create a keyframe. Then let's move a few frames forward, maybe to frame 30. And let's move it to the bottom right. And now if we play with this effect, we have the slide sway. If it's too fast for you, you can adjust the keyframes. Therefore, you can open this blind window and then click the displacement option. And now you can see both of these keyframes. So select them. And then down here in the tool list, click on time stretch. And now you can move the keyframes and change the timing. That's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, feel free to watch another one and I will see you there.